Shall we open our time with a word of prayer? Our Heavenly Father, again, we come to Thee and we do thank Thee, Father, for this day. We thank Thee for those who are gathered here today, Father. We thank Thee for Thy word. We thank Thee for the faithful teaching that we have been under for so many years. And Father, we just thank Thee that uh, thou, thou art still working today in this, in this uh, world that we live in a very, very complex and very difficult time that we're living in, this time of great tribulation. Father, please, we pray that thou would help us as we, as we look into thy word, that we might be encouraged, Father, and strengthened. And, and uh, might it be that thou would give us the strength and the courage and the fortitude to declare thy word, Father, uh, boldly in this world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, so, yeah, so I was um, the other day uh, looking at, um, looking at uh, uh, some, some uh, footage uh, from, from back in 9-11 uh, of 2001, if you, re if you will recall, a day that was uh, a lot of people were, uh, a day that was a, a day of, of, of horror and terror, if you will, uh, going back to that, to that scene back then. And, it re and I was also reflecting on the fact that uh, today we're, we're really bombarded today with our TVs and, and internet and every other way, uh, instant text messaging and instant everything. We're bombarded today by the news media, so to speak, and whether it's talking about political politics or whether it's talking about uh, wars or wars and rumors of wars and so on. And then, um, and then I happened to come across um, a, um, a uh, audio recording way back in 1993. And this was when our beloved Bible teacher, Mr. Camping, was on the Larry King show at the time and um and he was and there was another gentleman on the program uh dr john noe and um and 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 it really just hit me a little bit because um you know as mr camping was explaining the fact that basically he's blow i'm i'm here blowing the trumpet are you ready are you ready and really that that has to be you know that's still that has not changed you know, uh, from then to today. So the question I was asking myself is, what is really the big news today? Is it, is it who's going to be the president? Is it going to be, uh, what, what is the re really big news? And as, you, as I'm sure we're all aware, there's a, a, lot of, uh, a lot of conflict going on out there between various different factions and so on, politically and so on. But the really big news, you know, today is the fact that Christ is coming. Christ is coming. And that, that is a horror story that the world has no idea about. Okay, and, and that really uh, reminds us of, of how important it, it is that we who know the truth and we who have the truth, that we do everything in our power uh, so to speak, whether it's prayer or, or financially or whatever that, uh, you know, and witnessing, directly witnessing with, with our loved ones and so on. We live in a big world today, you know, we live in a world of eight billion, almost eight billion people and, um, and the world's population is still going up and, um, and God has some significant things to say about the salvation that's, gonna, that's going on as we get closer and closer to the return of Christ. And, 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 there, and they are things that encourage us because, for example, the Bible lays down the, uh, the principle uh, of the fact that the last shall be first and the first shall be last. And when I, when I studied that in the Bible, we find that in several places. You know, we can, we can look at that two different ways. One way is just the, the spiritual dimension where we, where we can recognize that, you know, Christ did not come for the righteous. He didn't come for those who need no physician. 
you know, Christ came for, the, for sinners. And, and so one way we can look at that uh, principle, the last shall be first, is to, to recognize that those who are the off-scouring of the world, those who are the despised of the world and so on, they are the very ones that God will, uh, is, uh, is calling to give them salvation, and they will be the first. Whereas those, uh, especially those who have been under the hearing of the gospel for a long, long, long time, and who never have become saved will be the last. But there's also, we can also look at that statement, the last shall be first, in a chronological way, because, and I pointed this out before, but uh, if you turn for a moment uh, to Matthew 20, and I'm not gonna spend too much time on this, but in Matthew 20, we have a parable there, Christ spoken parables, and it starts out in verse one, talking about a, a householder, uh, that went out early and we know of course that the householder is a picture or a figure of Christ He went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard Laborers into his vineyard and of course uh, when we go out into the world with the gospel We are Christ's laborers uh, working in his vineyard in his vineyard and, and we know today, of course, that the vineyard that God has in view is not the local congregations in, any longer. It is, it is the eternal vineyard, the eternal invisible uh, vineyard. Uh, and, and so in this parable, uh, the householder uh, went out and hired laborers into his vineyard, verse one, and uh, when, when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, um, he sent them into his vineyard and, and he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace and said unto them, go ye also into the vineyard and whatsoever is right I will give you. And they went their way. Again, he went out about the sixth and the ninth hour and did likewise. And then about the 11th hour, he went out and found others standing idle and saith to them, why stand ye here all the day idle? And they say unto him, because no man hath hire, hired us he saith unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, that shall ye receive. So when evening was come, the Lord of the vineyard said to his steward, Call the laborers and give them their hire, beginning from the last to the first. And when they came, uh, and, and when they came that were hired about the eleventh hour, they received every man a penny. And when the first came, they supposed that they should have received more, but, and they likewise received every man a penny. And when they had received it, they murmured against the goodman of the house. And of course, the goodman of the house or the householder is a picture of Christ. Verse 12 saying, these last have wrought one hour and thou hast made them equal to us. And then when we, if we go down to verse 16, we read, uh, or verse 15, Verse 15, uh, we read, is it not lawful for me to do what I will with mine own? Uh, is thine eye evil because I am good? So the last shall be first and the first last, for many be called and few chosen. And these, these last that were hired, you know, about the 11th hour, notice it says, verse 12, they, they wrought one hour. And that phrase, one hour, is used in a variety of places in speaking about this period called the Great Tribulation. I'll just remind us of, if you go to Revelation 17, verse 12, as, a, as, a, as an example here, uh, it's talking Revelation 17, I'm sorry, Revelation 17, verse 12, and Christ is talking about the beast who is Satan, who came out of, you know, who, who was loosed at, at, during this time. Um, we read in verse 14, Revelation 17, I'm sorry, Revelation 17, verse 12, verse 12. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten ki kings, which have re received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour, one hour with the beast. One hour with the beast. And we also find that phrase one hour used in, in Revelation 18 here, right across the page here. Uh, Revelation 18, we read in verse 10, standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour 
is thy judgment come. One hour. And of course, Babylon is the citadel of Satan. And today we know that Satan has been installed in the local congregations today. And, and it's saying, and this is looking, it's saying here, for in one hour is thy judgment come. And remember, we read, for example, in 1 Peter 4, 17, judgment must begin with the house of God. Uh, we, and, and here in Revelation uh, 18, verse uh, 7, uh, 16 and 17, um, um, we, we can begin verse 15 of Revelation 18. The merchants of these things which were made rich by her, that is referring to Babylon again, uh, the churches and congregations shall stand afar off for the fear of her torment, weeping and wailing, and saying, Alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, for in one hour so great riches is come to naught. One hour. And again, I believe we see that phrase uh, down in verse... Uh, and then, uh, there's another, uh, it's used again here in verse, in, in, in Revelation 18. So, and, and, then, and then, with that same thing in mind, turn over to Revelation 3, Revelation 3, verse 10, Revelation 3, verse 10. And here God is talking about, I believe, the same thing, about this time of great tribulation, or one hour. It, it, we, we read in verse 10 of Revelation 3, Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will also keep thee, or preserve, or guard thee, from the hour, the hour of temptation, or the hour of trial. That word temptation is used in one place, speaking about the fiery trial that we go through. And, and I was reminded this morning uh, about the fact that God brings us uh, those that he saves through the fire, so to speak. Like we read uh, uh, in Isaiah 48, 10, Isaiah 48, verse 10, for example. And, and remember that the, the time of great uh, tribulation can also be understood as the time of great affliction. It's the, the word is, that same word, uh, tribulation, you know, in Matthew 24 is used in um, Acts chapter 7, verse 11, where it talks about Jacob's affliction. And remember that when Jacob had to leave the land of Canaan and go into Egypt, that was a, a type or a figure of our present day uh, great tribulation. But in Isaiah 48, verse 10, Isaiah 48, verse 10, we read, Behold, I have refined thee, but not with silver. I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. In the furnace of affliction. And if we go back to Revelation 3.10 uh, again, God says, Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will also keep thee or guard thee from the hour of temptation or the hour of trial, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. And that's where we are today. That is exactly where we are today. If we go back to Daniel for a moment, Daniel 11 in Daniel chapter 11, there we, we, in the book of Daniel, of course, where God is giving many uh, prophecies concerning our day, and, and, we, and we know, we're very familiar with the fact that God told Daniel, uh, seal these things up, seal up, the, the words are sealed until the time of the end, and we, we are in the time of the end, but we read in Daniel 11, verse uh, uh, 31, we could start in verse 31 of Daniel 11. We read, um, or verse 30, verse 30 of Daniel 11, for the ships, for the ships of Shid Shidim shall come against him, therefore he shall be grieved and return and have indignation against the holy covenant. So shall he do, he shall even return and have intelligence with them that forsake the holy covenant. This, of course, is speaking about Satan's activity as he is loosed in this, during this period of great tribulation. And we read, And arms shall stand on his part, and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength. And the sanctuary of strength historically were the churches and the congregations. 
They shall pollute the sanctuary of strength and shall take away the daily and they shall place the abomination that maketh desolate. And remember how Matthew 24, verse 15, where we read there, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, then let them which be in Judea flee to the mountains. That is, flee to the kingdom of God, flee to Christ. Um, and verse uh, continuing here in Daniel 11, and such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries, by flatteries by flatteries. But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do. And then it goes on in verse 33, and they that understand among the people shall instruct many, yet they shall fall by the sword and by flame, by captivity and by spoil many days. Now when they shall fall, they shall be holpen with a little help, but many shall cleave to them with flatteries, with flatteries. And then it says in verse 35, and some of them of understanding shall fall to try them, to try them, and to purge, and to make them white, even to the time of the end, because it is yet for a time appointed. And it, so the, in this verse, verse 35, let me read it again. It says, some of them of understanding shall fall to try them, and to purge, and to make them white. And that's the language of salvation, you see. And again, it, 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 it takes us back to the fact that God, like we read in Isaiah 48:10, that uh, God brings us through the, the affliction, the furnace of affliction. And uh, we don't necessarily understand all of this, how it all works out. This is God's word, and we, we simply uh, accept what God has declared. But now going back to this matter of the... Uh, of the, of the blowing the trumpet. Uh, let, me, let me go back to, um, um, well, first of all, let's read 1 Thessalonians 5. A, a very, this is very familiar to us, but we have to be reminded again and again. We, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, we read this in verse 1. 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 1, we read, But of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write to you for yourselves. Know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief, as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape they shall not escape. Sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But, but notice it goes on. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. You are, ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. And that, that uh, command to watch is repeated again and again and again in the Bible. And so on that matter of watching, if we go back to Ezekiel 33, Ezekiel 33 here, Okay, this is Ezekiel 33, beginning in verse 1, we read this. Again, the word of Jehovah came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of thy people, and say unto them, <clears throat> When I bring the sword... Ezekiel 33, verse 1. Okay, again, the word of Jehovah came to me, saying, Son of man... Speak to the children of thy people and say to them, When I bring the sword upon a land, if the people of the land take a man of their coasts and set him for their watchman, for their watchman, if when he seeth the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet and warn the people, then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet and taketh not warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet and took not warning. His blood shall be upon him, but he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. 
But if the watchmen see the sword come and blow not the trumpet, and the people be not warned, if the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. Okay, let's turn over to Amos 3 for a moment. Amos 3. So there we read in Amos 3. Amos 3, beginning in verse uh, 4, beginning in verse 4 of Amos 3. Will a lion roar in the forest when he hath no prey? Will a young lion cry out of his den if he have taken nothing? Can a bird fall in a snare upon the earth where no gin is for him? Shall, uh, shall one take up a snare from the earth and have taken nothing at all? Shall a trumpet be blown in the city and the people not be afraid? Shall there be evil in a city and Jehovah hath not done it? Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. The lion hath roared, who will not fear? The Lord God has spoken, who can but prophesy? So we are, that is our role in this world, is to blow the trumpet because we see the sword coming. But wonderfully, it's not, the situation is not, in other words, um, let me, if you don't, let's turn back to Ezekiel 3 for a moment where we have this, this command concerning the watchman repeated. This is Ezekiel 3, verse 17. Ezekiel 3, verse 17. Verse 17. There we read, Son of man, I have made thee a watchman, unto the house of Israel. Therefore hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his way to save his life, to save his life. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Yet if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. In other words, we are warning the wicked to save his life, to save his life. Because you see, it, is, it, it reminds me a lot, in fact, I think about this all the time, actually, of the salvation of, jo of uh, Nineveh in the book of Jonah. Jonah came to Nineveh and declared to them, uh, God c commanded Jonah to declare to them that God would destroy the city in 40 days. In 40 days. And what was their reaction? Remember, and from everything we know or read about Nineveh, as far as we know, there was, they had no, uh, no presence there like, because they were, they were completely outside of Israel. And there's no evidence that we can read about that would say that they had any representation there uh, in terms of any outward uh, representation of the kingdom of God, the God of the Bible. But here comes Jonah, a complete stranger, uh, telling them that God is going to destroy the city in 40 days. And the, from the king on down, this is the proud king. Uh, uh, the Bible tells us it was a wicked city. And from the king on down, he declared, let us, uh, uh, let, let us cry mightily to God, that God might have mercy, that God might have mercy. Uh, and they sat in sackcloth and ashes, and, um, and, uh, and, and that from the king on down, they sat in sackcloth and ashes, and, and, and cried, uh, 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 let man and beast be covered with sackcloth, it was, this is at Jonah 3, verse 8, and, and cry mightily unto God. Yea, let, let them turn every one from his evil way and from the violence that is in their hands. Who can tell if God will turn and repent and turn away from his fierce anger that we perish not? 
And so, uh, that, and so there again, you see Jonah faithfully carried out God's command there to warn, the, to warn the people of Nineveh that there was judgment coming. And that's where we are today as well, that we know that judgment is coming. We know, uh, we, uh, we know that all the evidence points to the fact that Christ's return is imminent, is imminent, and um, we, we know, you know, we, we have, for example, uh, that, that, that outstanding reference in Matthew 24, uh, 32 and 33, where God tells us that when you see the fig tree and leaf, you know that summer is nigh. So likewise, when you see all these things, you can know that he is at the very gates. And we know from that prophecy that that corresponds to the year 1948, when, when the nation of Israel, uh, which is the biblical fig tree, that, that uh, uh, was, was officially declared or reconstituted as a nation again after almost 2,000 years. And therefore we know that we are living in that time frame uh, described in Matthew 24. So, so, the, so the time for us to be uh, declaring to the world is, is now. Now, let's turn uh, for a moment to um, Matthew 25. And I want us to under, I want to see here the, how uh, the, the emphasis that Christ puts on what our task is as believers. Um, in Matthew 25, first of all, God starts out in Matthew 25 uh, with this parable of the ten virgins, of the ten virgins. And we're, we've, we're, many of us are, are quite familiar with this parable. We know that uh, there was ten virgins, uh, five of whom were wise and five were foolish. Of course, the, the wise virgins are those who are truly God's elect, uh, children of God, the five foolish are those that identify externally with the kingdom of God, and yet they are not children of God. And, and the wise have oil in their lamps, uh, re signifying the fact that the belie believers are indwelt by the Holy Spirit, whereas the foolish are, have no oil in their lamps. They, they do not have the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. And we read that verse five, while the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And then, it, uh, and, and when I researched that, um, uh, I believe that that's a reference to the fact of during the church age, uh, not uh, because, because we had not yet come to the time of the end when God said that he would unsee unseal the words of the, of the prophecy like we read in Daniel. And in that sense, the believers had not yet been awakened in that sense to understand the end time truths uh, referred to in Daniel. And remember, uh, if we go back to the book of Daniel, you'll find in Daniel uh, 8 and also Daniel 10 that Daniel was, was in a, 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 a vision. He experienced a vision in which he was in a deep sleep. Uh, and then a hand touched him and set him upright and said, that now, that, that now thou will uh, be made to understand the, end, the truths that shall come to pass. And, and so, and, and um, we also read in Matthew 13, verse 25, for example, uh, in reference to the parable of the wheat and tares, while, while men slept, the, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the enemy was sowing, began to sow tares among the wheat. So, and then it goes on here in Matthew 25, verse 6, and at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, Christ is coming. Go ye out to meet him. And why does he say, go ye out? Go ye out of what? Go ye out of Babylon. Like we read in Revelation 18, verse 4, uh, flee Babylon. Or we read the same thing in Jeremiah 51, verse 6, flee Babylon. And we know that Babylon is, prime, is a reference there to the spiritual Babylon where Satan is ruling. Even as 2 Thessalonians 2 tells us that's, that uh, he is installed uh, in the temple and he is worshipped as God because he's coming with deceit and with flatteries and so on. So behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. And that's where we are today. And then, he, and then um, if we jump down to verse 10, for example, we read now this well, actually, let's, uh, let's read verse 8. And the foolish, 
said to the wise, give us of your oil. They're, they're talking this, in this parable, the foolish are talking to the wise, saying, give us of your oil. That is, give a, we, want the Holy, we want the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. But when we read elsewhere in the Bible, we read that, yes, they, the, those like the churches, they want the, they want the Holy Spirit, but on their own terms, on their own terms, uh, you know, and uh, so give us of your oil. But then verse nine says, but the wise answered saying, not so lest there be not enough for us and you, but go rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And selling and buying have to do with bringing the gospel. Like Isaiah 55 says, in verse 1, Isaiah 55, verse 1, you know, God likens the bringing of the gospel to buying and selling. Isaiah 55, verse 1, Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters, and he that hath no money, come ye by... I, I, sorry, Isaiah 55, verse 1. Yep. Yeah. Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters, and he that hath no money, Come ye buy and eat, yea, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which satisfieth not? Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness, and so on. God li likens the, and, and God, for example, re uh, refers to the churches and congregations as merchant men. Uh, merchant men, like for example, when he sent when he sent out the ships, the ships of Tarshish in the days of Solomon, and bringing back silver and gold and so on. Uh, God likens the the gospel to buying and selling. But going back to Matthew 25, verse 9, when the foolish say to the wise, "Give us of your oil," the wise answered and said. Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you, but go to the, but rather go rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. But we read in Revelation 13, if you would like, if we can turn to there, Revelation 13, during this time of the great tribulation when Satan is installed in the con local congregations, we read, um, this is Revelation 13, which is dealing with, with, this, with this great tribulation time when Satan is installed in the churches. And we read, um, um, well, we read beginning in verse uh, 13, beginning in verse 13 of Revelation 13, and he, and he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and that can be shown to identify with this matter of being slain in the spirit, which is one of these phenomena that is going on in the charismatic churches. And then goes on in verse 14, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth um, that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. And, uh, and that's just talking about the fact that Christ, uh, Satan was dealt a death blow at the cross, but now during this time of great tribulation, he is loosed again. And verse 15, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And, that's, and remember, to be killed, we, we've learned that to be killed in our day has to do with the uh, believers being silenced and being driven out of the local congregations. And verse 16, and he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. Now it's not a physical mark, it's a spiritual brand or mark. And then it goes on in verse 17, and that no man might, might buy or sell, that's the phrase, buy or sell, save he or except for he that had the mark or the name of the beast. In other words, in the congregations, the only ones that are able to bring the gospel in the congregations in this time are those that have the mark of the beast, that is, those who are under the power of Satan. And, and um, that's what we get out of, uh, out of that teaching. 
But, but let's go back now to uh, Matthew 25, and we read um, in verse 10, Matthew 25, verse 10, while they went, this is, why, this is referring, this is while the, while the foolish are go going to those that buy and sell, that is, they're going to the congregations where, they're, where, they're, where their trust is, and we know that, that, that's not, that they're not bringing a salvation any longer of grace. They're, they're bringing a salvation of works. They're bringing a salvation wherein if they follow the rules of the church, they, can be, they claim that they are, are saved. And, but it goes on in verse 10 of Matthew chapter 25. While they went to buy, that is while the foolish went to buy, the bridegroom Christ came and they that were ready that is the wise went in with him to the marriage and the door was shut they went with him to the marriage and the door was shut now we read in Ephesians 5 verse 30 that we are Christ we are his bones we are his flesh and so on let me read that in Ephesians 5 for a moment okay Ephesians 5 Verse 30, we read there, um, For we, we are members of his body, of his flesh, and his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his fa mo father and mother, and shall be joined to his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Now that's the eternal church. That is the eternal, invisible church consisting of all those who do become saved. If we turn over to 1 John 3, verse 2. 1 John 3, verse 2. 1 John chapter 3, verse 2. We read there, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, but, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, that is when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Now the only way that we can be like him and be joined together with him as one flesh is because is it has to have in view the time when the last day when Christ appears and the believers are resurrected and receive a brand new spiritual body in which they will uh, be like Christ in every sense of the, wor of the word. So, that's, so therefore, when we go back to Matthew 25, 10, and it tells us that they that were ready, that is the wise virgins, they that were ready went in with him to the marriage and the door was shut. That is definitely referring to the rapture, to the time when the believers are caught up to be with Christ. And as a matter of fact, God picks up on that. If you turn to Revelation 19 for a moment, Revelation 19, verse 7, and there we read, and we know that the setting in Matthew in, in Revelation 19 is we are, are, are already, uh, the believers have all been raptured. And, and we read in verse 7 of Revelation 19, Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. The marriage of the Lamb is come. This identifies with the time when Christ appears and the believers are caught up to be with him and receive their brand new spiritual bodies. Isn't that wonderful? And then verse 8 goes on, And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. And he said unto me, Right blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And what is that? the marriage supper of the Lamb. If we, go, if we drop down to uh, verse 17 here, verse 17, And I saw an angel standing in the sun, <clears throat> and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper 
of the great God, that ye may eat the flesh of kings, and the flesh of captains, and the flesh of mighty men, and the flesh of horses, and of them that sit on them, and the flesh of all, free and bond, small and great. And you see, this is referring to the final judgment day when all the believers are with Christ in the air and the unsaved are left on this earth to experience a time of torment prior to the time when God destroys the heavens and the earth by fire. And so all of this ties together. And if we can go back again to Matthew 25, 10, that they, they went with him to the marriage and the door was shut. And that happens to be one of the proofs, and there are many in the Bible, to say that the door to salvation is not shut until we get to that last day. Until we get to that last day when Christ appears uh, and, and, and all the believers are caught up to be with Christ in the air, uh, having received their spiritual bodies. And then, it, and then, and then uh, we read in verse 11 uh, of Matthew 25, Afterward came also the other virgins, these are the foolish virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say to you, I know you not, watch therefore, there's that command, watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Now the rest, I want us to see in the rest of this chapter, beginning in verse 14, going down to the end of this chapter, what the, where, where the emphasis is. And the emphasis is, is altogether on the role that we have to, to play in this world. Because notice in verse 14, Christ gives us a parable. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one, and unto one he gave five talents and to another two, and to another one, and to every man according to his several ability, and straightway, or immediately, he took his journey. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same, and made, made other five talents. And likewise, he that received two, he also gained the other two. But he that received one went and digged in the earth, and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and reckoneth with them, them. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. His Lord said to him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Then he which had received the one talent, this is the one that buried the talent, in the ground said, Lord, I knew that thou art an hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid, and went and hid thy talent in the, in the earth. Lo, there, lo, thou hast that is thine. So he's giving, in other words, he's giving back the one talent that he had been given. He, he buried it in the earth, and he says, here it is. Here's your talent uh, that, you, that you gave me. Now, Notice the reaction here. His Lord answered and said to him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not and gather where I have not strawed. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers or to the bankers, and then at my coming I should have received mine own with interest or usury or interest. Take therefore the talent from him and give it unto him that hath ten talents. For unto every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall, he, shall be taken away even that which he hath. For unto every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall, he, shall be taken away, away even that which he hath. 
and cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Wow, that's so that when we study that and read that and meditate on that, Christ is saying he's given to each one of us the gospel. The, 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 obviously, these talents represent the gospel. And now we, as God's servants, are, are commanded to go out into all the world with the gospel. Now, some, some like the one with five talents, he, he gained five. The other with two gained two. And, uh, the, and, and so each one, according to his several ability, some, some more, some less. But, but, the, but, the, but the, uh, the, the, the marching orders, if you will, of God in his word is that every believer has a, has a, has a, uh, a command to share this gospel with the world. Now notice in, in the rest of the verses, beginning in verse 31, going down to the end of the chapter, we see exactly the same emphasis, exactly the same emphasis here. Notice in verse 31, when the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory and before him shall be gathered all nations and he shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the, sheep from the goats. He shall set, set the sheep on his right hand and the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was unhungered, and you gave me meat. I was thirsty, you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. Naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee unhungered, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say to them, Verily I say to you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it to me. And we know when we read these phrases, naked and you clothed me, and so on, God is not speaking about physical food and physical water and physical clothing and so on. God is talking about the gospel because it's when we, when we give, when we share the gospel, those who are the elect of God, uh, are, they are being fed the word of God. Uh, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Christ said, I am the bread of life, and so on. I am the bread of life. We know that the gospel is also referred to the, the waters of the gospel. Uh, those who are thirsty will, out of their belly, will spring forth rivers of living water, we read in John 7. And, um, taking, and, and what about the one who is a stranger? Well, the Bible says that before we are saved, we are strangers, but when we become when we become saved through the gospel, uh, we are adopted into God's family of, as a son of God, uh, and so on. Uh, when, uh, and when we are naked, before we become saved, we are naked. That is, all of our sins are exposed to God, to God. But when we become saved through the hearing of the, word, of the gospel, then the robes of Christ's righteousness were clothed with the robes of, of Christ's righteousness, and therefore we are no longer naked. Uh, our, our sins have all been covered by the blood of Christ, and so on. So these are the ones that are on his right hand, who he is saying, go into, uh, uh, come ye blessed, inherit the kingdom of God, prepared for you from the foundation of, of the world. Well, then he turns to the goats on his left hand and says to them, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was a hungered, and you gave me no meat. I was thirsty, you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you clothed me not. Naked, and you clothed me not. Sick and in prison, and you visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee a hungered, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick? or in prison, and did not minister unto thee. Then he answered them, saying, Verily I say to you, inasmuch as ye did it not to one of the least of these, 
you did it not to me, and these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. Let's turn over one more passage to James chapter 2. James 2, we read, um, beginning in verse 10, this is James 2, James 2, beginning in verse 10. Maybe we can begin ver in verse 5, verse 5 of James 2. Hearken, my beloved brethren, hath not God chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom, which he hath promised to them that love him? But ye have despised the poor. Do not rich men oppress you and draw you before the judgment seats? Do not they blaspheme that worthy name by the which you are called? If ye fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor, thou shalt love. And what is the highest form of love we can give to our neighbor according to this Bible? It is to give them the gospel because, because they, we, we can give them physical food and, and they can be satisfied for, for the immediate time, but that, that will not do one do nothing for them spiritually. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, you do well. But if ye have respect to persons, ye commit sin and are convinced of the law as transgressors. For, whos <laughs> for whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. Whosoever, now this is another verse to meditate on. For whosoever, if, if we could hypothetically find someone in the world who had kept the law absolutely perfectly, absolutely perfectly, which doesn't exist, and yet he offended in one point, he would be guilty of the whole law. For he said, do not, com uh, for, he, for he that said, do not commit adultery and also do not kill, uh, now if thou commit no adultery, yet if thou kill, thou art become a transgressor of the law. Uh, so speak ye, and, do, and so do, as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. For he shall have judgment without mercy, that, that hath showed no mercy. And mercy rejoiceth against judgment. What doth the prophet, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith, and have not works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say to them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding ye give them not the gospel, give them not those things which are needful to the body and to their soul, what doth it profit? Even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. So, so, there, so God is, and then we read in Second. Uh, uh, 2 uh, Corinthians 13, verse 5, where God tells us, examine yourselves whether you be in the faith. Know ye not that, uh, know ye not that, uh, this is 2 uh, Corinthians 13, verse 5. Second, sec, 2 Corinthians 13, verse 5, tells us, um, we read, uh, examine yourselves whether ye be in the faith, prove your own selves, know ye not your own selves how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates, that is, those who are rejected. But I trust ye shall know that we are not reprobates. I will close now in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for, that we can hear from thy word. We pray that thou would act in our lives according to thy good will and thy good pleasure. We thank you that you, we are thine, and we thank you that you work in us to will and to do of thy good pleasure. We ask all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen.